Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. Today we are starting a new series about a problem that I think is near and dear to everyone who's ever driven a car in a city. Uh, you've probably found yourself in the traffic light dilemma, uh, which is you're approaching a traffic light, it turns yellow, and you simply don't know whether you should continue going through the intersection and make it, if you'll make it in time, or whether you need to slam on the brakes to stop. Now, obviously, if you're far enough away from a yellow light, you should stop, right? I mean, there, there's no point in continuing on. You're not going to, you're not going to make it. If, if you know, you know when you're far enough away, and you also know that you know if the light turns yellow right as you're passing under it, you're going to keep going because if you slam on your brakes, you'll end up stuck in the middle of the intersection, and that's just as bad as if you barrel through an intersection uh, where you know you're not going to make the light. So we, we know how to, how to respond in those two extremes, but there's this dilemma zone in the middle, right? And we probably feel that more often than it's actually there, but it would be nice if we knew, number one, whether that dilemma zone actually exists uh, in real life uh, based on the physics, and two, is there any way that we can uh, incorporate that into, uh, into our driving practices to have a better idea of how to respond. And number three, if we're civil engineers, as opposed to uncivil engineers, uh, can we design traffic lights that respond better to their environment to keep people out of this, um, out of this dilemma zone? Um, and now I need to make this disclaimer. This is not legal advice. I'm not telling you what to do when you drive. I'm simply giving you the illustration that yes, this dilemma zone exists. And yes, it is something that we need to be thinking about as a society and as engineers. Um, so what I want to do in this series is take a few episodes and, and build a code that simulates uh, two cars approaching an intersection. We're going to have a traffic light. Uh, that's going to turn yellow and then red, and one of the cars is going to continue on through the intersection uh, regardless of of what the light is doing, uh, and the other car is going to slow down at a given acceleration um, until it stops, obviously. Um, and so the idea is that we want to be able to figure out which car is making the better decision. Is it a better decision to go through the intersection? Is it a better decision to stop? Is it an okay decision to do either? Or are you in the dilemma zone, in which case it is not okay to do either? And you just probably should have stayed in bed that morning. Um, most of us probably feel like that's most mornings. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this in vPython. Since this is an animation-based uh, code, uh, you've seen that I've animated a little bit in Scilab. Um, it does not, uh, I mean, it works well. It's not the easiest thing in the world to set up. So we're going to be doing this in vPython. vPython is a very easy code to use to create animations. Um, I've gone ahead and set up the window here um, so I've, I've had to do some research ahead of time about some of the uh, dimensions we're going to be using. So I've got in my notes here that our intersection is going to be 100 feet wide. That's uh, about an average size for an intersection. Obviously, we can change it if we want to. Um, the car that decelerates, the car that actually breaks and comes to a stop, is going to decelerate at about 10 feet per second squared. That's the average comfortable acceleration. So if you compare that to the acceleration due to gravity, 32 feet per second squared, it's about a third of the acceleration due to gravity. So it's about a third of a G, if you want to think of it in terms of that. Um, and we're going to have the car start out at about 250 feet away from the intersection, um, just so that way in our first case, they've definitely got enough time uh, to stop, then we can change that distance, uh, you know, as we like. And I've also got to put in the size of cars, which I looked up. The average car is about 15 feet long, 5.7 feet wide, and 6.6 .6 feet tall. At the, it's at this point that my brother is laughing because I'm working in feet when typically I like to work in meters. So point to you, Kyle. Um, so what we're going to do is the, uh, the first thing we've got is the window, of course. Um, and then, of course, I need to start creating some of the items that are going to go in the animation environment. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the cars. Now, this is a very special episode of Let's Code Physics because this is the first episode that I've recorded since gaining subscribers on YouTube. So I'm recording these uh, ahead of time, releasing them in, you know, in typical YouTube fashion. Um, and this week was the week that I sort of uh, launched uh, the first couple tweets, I uploaded the um, the channel intro video, and I've already got eight subscribers. Now, one of those is me, one of those is my brother, so two of those don't really count. 
you count Kyle, but you know, you, you, you were going to, you, you made the channel intro. So of course you're subscribing, uh, but I've got a few subscribers. And so in, uh, in, in keeping with the let's play tradition, um, I'm going to have, uh, the cars named after two of my first subscribers. So our first one is going to be cook, uh, William cook, one of our first subscribers. Um, he's going to get a red car and we're going to have him start, like I said, about 250 feet away from the intersection. So we'll put the intersection edge at zero, zero, uh, so that, or at X equals zero, so that it's easy to, uh, so it's easy to work with. Um, we're gonna make the car the average size of about 15.5 and 7.6 and 6.6. And we're gonna give him a red car. Uh, last, uh, last I checked, uh, Cook uh, would be fine with a red car, um, so we're going to give him that. And Cook, I, I'm assuming, is a is a peaceful, law-abiding citizen. So Cook is going to be the car that breaks. All right, so he's going to be the car that breaks. No matter what happens, as soon as that light turns yellow, he's going to break. Uh, in fact, let's have that be when light turns yellow. Another fun thing we can do with this is work in some reaction times. Um, you know, because obviously Cook has to see the light. His brain has a process, I need to stop, and he has to put his foot on from the, he has to move his foot from the accelerator to the brake. Um, so we're gonna use an instantaneous reaction time at first, we'll work in a reaction time later. So Cook is gonna be the car that breaks. Um, our next subscriber we're gonna include is Like a Ninja. Um, like a Ninja not only subscribed, he also tweeted uh, uh, at me the, the, the first day that my Twitter account went live, so very happy with that. And since he's a ninja, he's gonna barrel on through the intersection, cause you know, he's a ninja. Um, let's see, let's put him also at an X of negative 250. So they're going to start at the same uh, distance away from the intersection. We're just going to offset them in the Z direction. So in V Python, X is along the horizontal, Y is along the vertical, and Z is in and out from the screen. This is different from what you typically see in textbooks where Z is going upward, but you get used to it after a little while. Um, or you just remember to do a, a coordinate transformation. Uh, let's give his car the same size. And in fact, let's just copy and paste this whole thing. So his car is going to have the same size, but since he's a ninja, uh, let's make this the color green. Ninjas wear green sometimes, right? Well, ninja turtles are green, so there we go. So this is the car that continues car that continues regardless of what the light does. So ninja is going to be barreling through the intersection. Cook is going to be breaking. Okay. Cool, so we've created the cars. Uh, let's see, I need to also, uh, well actually let's run the code and make sure that that set things up appropriately. Do, 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 do. Uh oh, pause is not defined, uh oh. What have I, oh whoops, this is not position function, this is position equals, there we go. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got our um, animation window. Um, where we've got the two cars, so the red car is Cook, the green car is Ninja. Now I've set up the window to give us sort of a dramatic angle, so you'll notice that it has the forward direction as 10, negative 8, negative 10, and that way we're going to be looking in the, um, did I point at the screen a second ago? Boy, that's kind of embarrassing. Um, so that we're looking at, you know, at this point, the intersection is going to be over here, and so we'll be able to see these two as they go forward and cross the intersection. Okay, so let's take a look uh, back over to the code. So we've made our cars. Our next step, of course, of course, is to make the uh, the intersection. So what we're going to do is I'm just looking up the dimensions that I wrote down. Uh, earlier, I don't want to have to waste. I don't want to have to waste you, the viewers' time. Uh, you know, fiddling around with the numbers. Uh, so we're going to create an intersection. So we're going to call it intersection. And the reason that I'm giving these things names is so that I can refer to them later. If I just give the command box position blah blah blah, then that box is stuck there until I exit the code. There's nothing I can do to change it. There's nothing I can do to get rid of it. But if I give it a name, then I can update its position, its color, its whatever later on. Uh, that color variable is going to be important later because we'll have a traffic light and it needs to be able to change from green to yellow to red. Um, again, another reason to pick vPython. Uh, let's see, so our intersection is going to be another box and we're, let's see, so when you specify something's position, you're specifying the position of its center. So we have to do a little bit of math to get its 
uh, edge at zero, uh, at, excuse me, at x equals zero. So we're gonna have its the center of its position be 50, and we're gonna put it low just a little bit um, so that it can clear the cars. We're gonna do that minus a half times uh, the cars y size. That's just to move the intersection down so that the cars are going over the intersection and not through it. Again, that doesn't really change how the math works out. It's just visually nicer to not see cars going through the concrete. Cook and Ninja, I, I value your safety, so I don't want you running into the concrete. Um, and we'll have it be at Z equals zero. There we go, so there's its position. Its size, like I said, is gonna be 100 feet long, so that's 100 in the X direction. Uh, we'll make it just one deep in the Y direction, so this is literally gonna be a little slab that they they drive over and a hundred feet in the Z direction just so it's you know nice and square and this thing I you know I don't know whether uh, I'm sure there's a way I could get gray for concrete but let's just have white for right now and let's run the code and double check oh and the way I'm running that code is I'm just pressing F5 uh, on my keyboard okay so this is looking pretty good we've got our intersection here we've got our two cars and the reason I want to make a square for the intersection is because we're interested in seeing you know, when they cross the intersection and when they clear the intersection. And uh, I'm gonna have the code, uh, uh, excuse me, the file for this code in the description below. Uh, so you can download this along with the Python to play around with it. If you wanna play around with it, after you run the code, you can right click uh, anywhere in the window and uh, rotate it. So here you can get a head on view. So this is uh, looking along the X axis. So we can see they are at the same height on the y-axis, or if you want to rotate it around this way, you can see it from the intersections perspective. Or if you wanted to see it from overhead, uh, you could rotate it till you see it uh, overhead. Um, the shading on this intersection is reminding me of the starships from Star Trek Starfleet Academy for the Super Nintendo, which was one of the best uh, two-player space combat games that I've ever played, in my humble opinion. But that's neither here nor there right now. Um, let's see. Uh, later on, we're going to need to talk about where the intersection begins and where the intersection ends. So let's define some variables intersection beginning um, as the intersection x position minus one half of the intersection's size in the x direction. And then let's do the same thing with the intersection end. This is so that we know where those, you know, those uh, beginning into the intersection is. That's gonna be important later. And in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna add that. And let's double check. So if my math is correct, the intersection should begin at zero and end at 100, at x equals zero and at x equals 100. So let's have this thing print intersection begin and intersection end, just to make sure that I did the math correctly there. Oops, and of course I did something. Intersection is not defined. How is that possible? Name error, N I N T E R S. Oh, interscation. Interscation. There it is. There we go. There we go. So the intersection begins at zero, so that's this point right here, and ends at 100. That's this uh, line right here. Okay, that is wonderful. Okay, I don't need that print statement anymore. Cool, we're going to hit save. And so. Uh, let's see, the next thing we need to do is we need to get these cars moving. So this is, you know, a very nice, lovely picture that we have here, but the cars are not moving yet. So we're going to set up uh, some motion for the cars. The The way we're going to do this is through the Euler-Cromer algorithm, um, which I'm not going to re-explain here. I'll refer you to the first episode of the Police Chase series, uh, which... Uh, I'll have a link to that first video in the uh, in the description below. If you haven't seen that series yet, uh, please watch it. That's the, uh, the 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 first series on this channel. Uh, again, would love some feedback on that one, especially since it's the first one. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get these cars moving. And so in order to do that, I've got to give each of them an initial velocity. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, cook velocity. We're going to define a vector called cook velocity, and we're going to define a vector called ninja velocity. I did spell that right, V-E-L-O-C-I-T-Y. Okay, good. Um, and so I was thinking I would have these guys going at 45 miles an hour, kind of an average uh, uh, speed for a major road in a city. Um, and so I did a conversion ahead of time. That is 66 
feet per second since everything else is in feet in seconds we need this to be in feet in seconds so we're going to go with 66 and we're going to have these guys going at the same speed um uh it occurs to me i i i i i have met cook in person i haven't met like a ninja in person so like a ninja may in fact be female so uh my apologies for saying these guys or these drivers excuse me so we're gonna have these drivers going at the same speed uh so this is 66 feet per second is about 45 miles per hour uh, if we want to change that we can uh, so now we've given our drivers an initial speed uh, excuse me initial velocity right i didn't make it a vector um, so in order for the euler cromer method to work we've got to give a time step we're going to make that relatively small so a hundredth of a second um, and we are let's see so normally what i would do is i would set up a loop to end over a certain time range but really what i care about is that the cars reach the intersection. So I want to think about how I want this, this loop to end because we're going to be updating their velocity and position values uh, iteratively. And really what we're interested in is we're interested in seeing when does Ninja cross the intersection, right? That's ultimately what we're interested in. Ninja is sort of our, our guinea pig who is barely across the intersection no matter what the light says. Uh, thank you, Ninja, for your service to science. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to set this up as a while loop. So a while loop is true as long as the condition inside the little parentheses is true. So we're going to say while Ninja's x position, so this is x component of the position of Ninja, if you read it backwards, um, is less than the end of the intersection. So in other words, we're going to keep the code running until Ninja clears the intersection. Uh, Cook is either going to clear it at the same time as, the, as Ninja, or he's going to slow to a stop. And either way, uh, uh, Ninja is going to be the one that goes through the intersection regardless of what we do. At first, we're going to have them both going through, so we're not going to have uh, the traffic light turn on. So we're just going to have them both going through. We'll add in uh, the... We'll add in cook slowing down a little bit later. Um, I don't want this thing to blaze past me on the screen, so I'm gonna add in a rate command. And let's see, uh, so for the euler cromer method, all I need to do is say that cook's position is equal to his previous position or his current position plus his velocity times dt. Okay, go back to the you know that first video in um, in Police Chase, and you'll see the uh, you'll see where that comes from. And same thing for Ninja. In fact, I'm just gonna copy and paste and replace all my cooks with ninjas. That's a good staffing choice, right? Replacing all my cooks with ninjas. Um, cook becomes ninja. I mean, for all I know, like a ninja could be an excellent cook, and cook could be a, a great ninja. These two could be the same person, for all I know. I mean, you know, that's. No, hadn't thought about that. Okay, so according to this, uh, with each step of the while loop, uh, the time is going to go forward by a little step dt. Um, and, you know, we're not using time currently, but we will need it in a little in, in the next episode. So I'm going to have to put in a time increment there. And uh, this is just a little practice here to say print end of program just to say that, yes, we did get to the end. Okay, so... We've got this set up where the, I'm pointing at the screen again. We've got this set up where the, uh, as long as the ninja has not crossed the intersection, as long as he hasn't, as long as this driver, ninja, has not gotten to the end of the intersection, um, then we're going to keep updating their positions based on their velocities. We're not changing their velocities right now, so they should just sail right across the intersection. So let's hit F5 and see what we get. Uh oh, name error time is not defined. Oh, right. If I'm going to be adding to it, I have to define it. All right. Let's try that again. There we go. All right. And they're going, they're going, they're going. And okay. They reached the intersection at the same time. Now you notice again, uh, it, the code considers their position to be whatever the midpoint is. So technically we're looking at whatever the middle of the car is doing, which kind of makes sense. I mean, you know, if, if, if I were to make it so that it was their left uh, excuse me, their front bumper that made it to the end of the intersection. That doesn't really help a whole lot. Um, let's run that again just so I can show you uh, how cool this rotation feature is while the uh, animation is running. So we're going to run this thing and then we're going to rotate this around and you can see them, you know, they enter the intersection at the same time and they leave the intersection at the same time. So that was pretty cool. So we've got our cars set up. And so the, uh, we've got our stop condition set up appropriately. And so the next thing we need to do is we need to add in a traffic light because uh, right now they're just sort of sailing across the intersection. So next thing we're going to do uh, is add a traffic light and then uh, change Cook's motion to slow down uh, when he sees the yellow light. So thanks very much for watching. See you next time.